Hello everyone, welcome to the demonstration session of ModProcon. In this demonstration session, we will see the step-by-step -step installation of ModProcon and its different features. So let's start. So at the beginning, you will be provided with a download link of ModProcon. In that link, you will find a compressed file of ModProcon. Firstly, you have to download it. Our session will begin considering you have already downloaded the file. You have successfully downloaded the file. There should be a compressed file like this one on the screen. Otherwise, please try to download it again. Once we are done with the download, now we have to extract the file. The most common way of extracting a compressed file is either by using WinRAR or WinZip. You have to have any one of these two softwares. If you do not have any one of these two software, you can easily download it from Google. Both of these two software have free version available on internet. Now I am showing you how can you easily download this software. Open any web browser and go to google.com. Now write download WinRAR or WinZip. You will get the download link. Using that link, download the software and install it at your computer. Now to extract the file, we have to right click on the downloaded compressed file of ModProcon. If we right click, we will get a couple of options to extract. You can select any one of these options to extract. As I have already extracted it, so I am not clicking it again. You can select the option to extract, you can extract it to this directory or some other directory. If you want to extract to this directory, you can select extract to mode procon option. Together, both the compressed file and extracted folder need around 200 megabytes of space. Once we have select extracted the file, there will be a new folder like the one on the screen. Go inside the folder. There we will find another folder PPCP. We have to go inside this folder again. In this folder, there are all the files of mode token program. Among these files, we have to find one application file to run the program. The name of the file is PPCP. So if we type P a couple of times, we will come to that file. The file has a Bordrek logo on it and it's an application file. To get a better view, you can change the view settings of your computer to extra large icon. You cannot move this file to another directory. In that case, the program will not work. But if you want to create, you can create a shortcut of this file and copy it wherever you want. If you double click on this PPCP application file or press enter, the program will start running. It takes a few seconds to start the program. If the program runs successfully, we will see this page on the screen. This is the home page of ModProcon. And that was the installation part of ModProcon. Now we will use different features of the program. The program has basically two main features. First one is evaluation and second one is showing the model requirements. 
Both of these two features can be used for three major types of aquifers, groundwater, karst aquifer, and surface water. The procedure and layout of the pages are exactly identical for all three types of water resources. Therefore, we will just see it for one type of water system. It can be done similarly for other two types. Firstly, we will see the evaluation. As an example, we are taking the groundwater system. If we click the evaluation button, we will come to this page. Before talking about this page, I would like to share a couple of tips to ensure better visualization. First, if you click twice the maximize button lying on the top of top right side of the page, the screen will adjust to your screen size. If you cannot read the text of any column, you can double click on the right edge of that column. And whenever there is a table on any window, you can drag it both vertically and horizontally to read your desired word. Talking about this page, this is the PPCP data page. On the top of this page, there are two legends. The first one is the units. You might know Modprocon uses different chemical properties of PPCP such as solubility, sobability, volatility, etc. You can also see the values of these properties in the table. However, the values don't include the units with it. Therefore, the units are separately written in this legend. The other legend is the reference legend. All of these chemical values are collected from two data sources. The first one is SciFinder and the second one is Comtox dashboard of US EPA website. These two sources are marked as one and two. On the other hand, in the table for each PPCP, there is a column where the references of data are written. For example, for the first PPCP, the PKA value is taken from source one and the other values are taken from source 2. That means the PKA value is collected from SciFinder and the other values are collected from US EPA website. Modprocon comes with a database which already has 115 PPCPs. But if you have any other PPCP or if you have different chemical values for any PPCP, you can easily add them to the database by clicking the add new data button lying on the bottom of this page. If we click that button, we will come to this page. The unit legend is again displayed on this page because while entering chemical values, we have to strictly follow this set of legend. We do not have to write the units, but we have to ensure the values are in correct unit. Let's do an example. First, we have to write the name of the PPCP. Let's assume the name is XYZ. Then we have to write all the chemical values in the right units. Let's assume the solubility is two milligram per liter. It is enough to write 2. The value of log KOW for solubility is 3.5. And the value of Henry's constant for volatility is 0 0.0001. The value of DT50 in days for degradability is 20. And the value of PKA is 7. Please pay attention. If you want to add any PPCP to the database, you have to enter the name and these five values. Otherwise, it will not be saved. For example, if we do not write the solubility value and try to save the PPCP, the program will show you an error message. 
However, the entry of cache number is optional. You can skip it if you don't know it. Now, if we click the save and exit button, a message will appear on the screen. If we click the, the OK button there, the PPCP will be added to the database. We can find it on the bottom of the table. If we want to delete it, we have to click the delete all user input button. Then a warning message will appear. If we click OK button, all the entries added by user are deleted at the same time. However, none of the PPCP from the default database can be deleted. Now let's see how we can evaluate the likelihood of being found in groundwater. We can evaluate maximum 5 PPCPs at the same time. If we do not select any PPCP or select more than 5 PPCPs for evaluation, the program will give us an error message. Let's see that. First, I am clicking the evaluate button without selecting any PPCP. An error message appears. Now I am selecting more than 5 PPCPs. I'm clicking the evaluate button. Again, an error message appears. Therefore, we have to select in between one to five PPCPs. As you might have already noticed, in order to select any PPCP, we have to check the checkbox lying on the left side of the table. Please pay attention. If you have checked it correctly, a tick mark will appear. If you want to unselect it, you can click it, click on the same box again. You can also select a PPCP which has been added by you. Let's select the maximum possible number of PPCP, which is five. Now we have to click the evaluate button to complete the evaluation. Once we click the evaluate button, this page will appear. In this page, you can find the indexes for your selected PPCPs calculated by the program. You can find the result both in tabular and in graphical form. In the graph for each PPCP, a color is assigned. Each index indicates the tendency of being transported towards groundwater. The higher value means stronger tendency. Based on four indexes, the program calculates the final stochastic likelihood for each PPCP. The result can be found in this column. In this case, we can see that three PPCP are likely, two are very likely to be found in groundwater. The result can vary from PPCP to PPCP. If the result says that it has either very likely or likely probability, in that case, the program recommends to do a further modeling. In that case, Motrocon also provides with a list of parameters which are needed for further modeling. This is the second key, key feature of the program, which will, we will see now. It can be accessed directly from this page or home page. Before going to that feature, I would like to finish this part. In this part, we saw how to add PPCP to database and how to evaluate likelihood. We saw it for groundwater. The procedure is exactly same for cast aquifer and surface water. Along with the evaluation, Motrocon also provides link of one reference paper for each chemical. If you click on the hyperlink of the paper, you will be directed to the journal website of the paper. However, Please pay attention. 
you might need access or might have to buy the paper to read it. One more point. The program only provides one literature suggestion. There can be multiple other significant reading materials which you can find yourself. Now we will see how to check the requirements for modeling. We can go to this window from home page. From the home page, we can select our desired type of aquifer depending upon our study area. We can also do the evaluation for that type of aquifer and go to the modeling requirement from the results window, like we saw a while ago. For example, if we evaluate the likelihood for surface water, At the end, we will get a button for model requirements. That will lead us to the model requirements of surface water. Same goes true for groundwater and karst system. As the procedure and layout of model requirements are same for all of these three types of water resources, we will do it for just one, for groundwater system. Please be careful, the model requirements vary from aquifer to aquifer, but the layout and procedure of checking requirements remain same. If we click the model requirements of groundwater system, we will come to this window. In this window, we can also adjust the screen size. And use the drag bar to get complete view. In the table, in the first column, we have the list of parameters that we need to develop a numerical model. In the second column, there's a brief description why this data is needed and what is the application of that parameter. Depending on the data availability, you can select which of these data are available. The process is exactly same as the selection of PPCP, which we did a while ago. First, let's assume we do not have any of this data. So we are letting all the checkboxes empty. Now, if we click the Evaluate button to check whether a numerical model can be built without this data, the program will say that model cannot be built. Please collect the missing data. In addition, text will appear in the third column of the table, which was empty. In this column, as a remark, the program will suggest how the missing data can be collected and what should be the appropriate way. This feature is designed so that user can have a better understanding of the data collection process. If user already has the data, he should click the check boxes and click the evaluate button. In that case, the old remarks will disappear as the data are available. And the program will say that it is possible to develop a numerical model. It will also show further recommendation. Thus, one can check which data are needed, why those data are needed, and what can be done if the data are unavailable. We have seen it for groundwater. Again, the process and layout are identical for karst system and surface water. I'm showing you quickly for other two types of water systems.
We have seen the installation and the key features of Mode to Count program. Thank you for your attention. If you have any other questions, please communicate with appropriate authority.